Hello and welcome back. In this section, we're going to be talking about domain modeling. If you remember the design thinking mental model that we saw previously, the domain model is one of the other techniques that we as software engineers have, which will give us a very, very good information about what is the problem that we are actually trying to solve. So along with use case diagram, this is the other technique that forms the tactical portion of understanding the what of a given problem statement. Now, unfortunately, domain model is not part of UML specification or one of the UML diagrams. And maybe that's one of the reasons why it is not used that often. But from my perspective, from what I have seen, domain model is one of the most easiest and one of the best ways of not only understanding a given domain, but it's also one of the most effective ways of communicating that particular thinking about the entire business problem to anybody else. And I hence feel that learning how to do domain modeling is an extremely important skill. So let's try and understand how to go about you know, arriving at a domain model. Before we look at the definition of a domain model, let's see an example of a domain model. In this slide, I have given a small portion of the retail banking domain model. Now, irrespective of where we are currently staying or what country or what state, we can all go to a bank that's closest to us and all of us can actually open an account. Now, the type of account might vary slightly in terms of the features that they offer, but I guess most banks do offer some kind of a saving account or a current account or a checking account. Once we have actually opened the account, we can do different kinds of transactions against it, being crediting some money to the account or some withdrawals or transfer of money from one account to the other or checking of balance. All these are considered as transactions against that particular account. And we can also get statements, be it quarterly or monthly or weekly. Now, how is it possible that even though we went to different banks in different, uh, in different states and different countries, yet we seem to understand the problem in the same context or in the same way. The main reason for that is the fact that the entities that are represented on this particular slide are called as domain entities. So what is a domain entity? Domain entity is a very, very high level conceptual entity that defines or that exists in a particular problem space and hence it really does not matter which bank you and I went to, as long as they're all dealing with the same industry or the same kind of business domain, which is retail banking, these entities still convey the exact same meaning and really do not depend on a particular client that belongs to this particular space. That's the reason why the domain entities themselves are actually also called as invariants. Now, what is an invariant? Invariant is something that does not change often or the rate of change is extremely slow. So as long as we're all looking at a banking, retail banking space, the concept of an account or the concept of a transaction or a statement in a bank really does not change. But if you look at it, then what, what varies? If I were to go to Citibank versus if I go to HDFC Bank, will everything look and feel exactly the same? No, there will be certain changes. But the concept of an account statement transaction does not vary. But what could change could be certain business rules. An example of a business rule could be what is the minimum balance that one needs to maintain an account? Or what are the service charges if one were to uh, not maintain a particular balance in a given account? And now these are all examples of business rules. These will definitely vary from one bank to the other. But across all the banks that are dealing with the retail banking space, the concept of domain entities or the conceptual model in terms of how this particular domain works does not change. And that's the reason why domain models are so important to understand because it's a way of understanding the problem in which the, the problem domain into which we are trying to solve a particular problem for. So having said that, what's the simplest definition of a domain model? Simply put, domain model is something that models the invariance and their relationship in a given business domain. Or another way of saying it is it's basically a conceptual model of the system wherein it describes the various entities that are involved in that particular problem space and their relationships. I would also urge the participants to read about, uh, read about domain model as defined or as Eric Evans describes in his uh, very famous book, uh, Domain Driven Design. And the, the concept or the term that he uses there is called something called as ubiquitous language. Domain model is the ubiquitous language that he's talking about. And he, 
he goes on describing how to arrive at it and also how to use it as a way of communicating that particular understanding to somebody else and how and why it is so important for everyone who's involved in a given project to actually have the exact same understanding of what is the business problem that they're all trying to solve. So that's actually a very good read and I would urge you guys to go read Eric Ivan's Design Driven Development book regarding this particular topic as well. Having seen the definition of a domain model, now the next question would be, why should we write a domain model? Now, yes, we're all technologists, but I think technical skills by themselves are pretty useless if we do not really understand the business or if we use the technical skills to solve for a wrong business problem. So for me, from a personal standpoint of view, what is the easiest and the best way of understanding a given business domain or the business problem statement? For me, that's a domain model. So for me, that's the most important reason as to why I would why I would write domain models and why I would tell all my participants to write a domain model as well. The primary purpose of a domain model as to why it should be written is to have a very, very good, uh, good and correct understanding of the business domain, but also use it as a ways and means of communicating that to each and every one that's actually involved in the particular project. So domain model basically becomes the document that captures all the key concepts and helps you give you a common vocabulary that every single team member can actually use. And that would be the primary reason to write a domain model. Now that we know its importance, let's find out how to write a domain model. As I mentioned earlier, domain model is not part of UML specification which is, I think, very unfortunate. Given that it's not part of a standard, we really do not have a standard notations that are available as part of any standard for us to draw a domain model. But having said that, we still borrow a couple of notations from the class diagrams of UML and using which we can actually write a domain model itself. Now, if you notice here on the screen, I've given the same retail banking space domain problem that we spoke about earlier. And the notations that I have borrowed from the class diagram are three of them. First, how to represent an entity itself. The second one being a bi-directional association between two different entities. And the last one that we have actually used is the concept of multiplicity that helps us define the degree of relationship between two different entities. And it should be noted that the entities, the only part of the entity that we have modeled is just the name. We really have not gone into any of the members be it state or behavior. And the reason for that is because domain entities are something that's supposed to represent at an extremely high level or a conceptual level, and you really do not want to go into the, the details of it. So uh, those are the three uh, notations that we borrow from class diagrams. And with just those three, we are able to represent a domain model uh, in, in, in the appropriate way. Having said that, the only other thing that I would keep in mind would be to ensure that the entities that we try and identify and model are always from a problem space and not really from a solution space. So that would be the real challenge to think about and do it. But using these three notations from class diagrams is the way in which we can actually go ahead and write domain models. Here is a simple approach that I use and that's, this is what I would also recommend that uh, you follow if you were to write a domain model. Uh, I probably would start with the business requirements or the use cases themselves and go about trying to identify domain entities. Uh, if the domain entities by themselves are not really apparent, you might consider using the noun or the noun phrase approach of trying to identify the various entities. And once you have a certain list that you think are entities, the next question that I would ask against each of these identified ones would be to ask the question of, is it really from a business space or am I trying to add something from the solution space? So that would be the first question that I would ask myself. And if it was something that I felt or know that it's going to be from a problem space, uh, sorry, from a solution space, I would not consider it. And the next one to check against the list that you have is to see whether the entities that you have identified is an actor. Now, do actors not belong in a domain model? Probably not. Even without any actors, a domain model should still hold true. Uh, and the, the, the other thing to, other way to look at would be actors, the primary place where an actor belongs would be in a use case or a use case diagram. Uh, 
So that would be the way I look at it. It's not wrong to include just one or two actors in a given domain model, but if you start modeling too many or all of the actors, then it might take you in a different path. So I typically you know, avoid modeling actors within my domain model. And the last question as part of my checklist that I would check against the identified entities would be, is this representing a process by any chance? And again, as you note, domain model is not about process. It's just about business entities. Now, what would in fact be the process of a particular business uh, problem statement? They tend to be use cases themselves. And that's the reason why actors and process per se do not belong in a domain model. So I would use these as the checklist and go about writing the particular uh, you know, domain model. But it happens many a times that you might have identified an entity, but you really do not know where it actually fits. Those kind of stuff are extremely important to know because that aspect of you thinking about where it fits and then saying, I really do not understand, is an extremely important information for you to know that you're trying to understand the business in a particular way, but you have you have some questions or you need a certain amount of clarifications. And with these kind of questions is what I would go to my client or a domain expert and say, uh, sir, you've been talking about this particular entity in a couple of different places, but I really do not know where it fits or what is the purpose of it or what it does. That's a far better question as a, as a consultant to go and ask my client or my domain expert instead of going to someone, uh, going to them with a blank slate and saying, I do not understand any of this. Now you give me all of that particular information. And that's the other reason why I feel so strongly about the importance of domain models themselves. So when you go through this list, uh, make sure you know how to identify the entities and where to place them in terms of the business problem. But if you think you're not able to place it, that itself is actually trying to help you understand the business in an extremely correct way and the right way. So use that as to figure out what are the next set of questions that you're going to go ask your uh, business experts or uh, domain experts. So this would be the approach that I would take. So having said that, now let's try and do an exercise where we try to identify domain entities and write a domain model itself. So I've presented the same problem that I gave in the previous section, so the next slide, and this particular video ends there. So stop the video on the next, next slide and uh, then draw a domain model for the given problem statement on a piece of paper and then once you're ready with your domain entities and the domain model you can continue with the next video. I'll see you later then.